Hello everyone. I hope all of you are doing great today. Uh, this is Ahmed and uh, I welcome all of you on the day three of this exciting series of practice to pass webinars by none other than the prestigious body itself, ACCA. So the day one and the day two was very productive and I tried to ensure that you are much more relaxed now and more importantly you have to be more optimistic you have to be more optimistic at the same time you have to be more aggressive you should not feel extraordinary under pressure you should believe that yes you can it's a doable job it's not a mission impossible the paper is designed by human beings and they they have designed the paper according to your aptitude your caliber so you are the one who can do it if you are Studying triple a right now and if you have got exam on monday 6 june 2022 you have already got the potential and the caliber to qualify acca now in order to make sure that monday 6 june 2022 uh is going to be a successful successful day for both of us for you guys and for me as well we have to make sure that we make the best out of these four days not only that we have to capitalize on the on the learning from these four days and we have to carry forward the momentum in the next eight or ten days leading to the final mock exam maybe on the 29th or 30th may so on the day one i told you there are seven areas in our syllabus and out of those seven areas i skipped the a and the g and i requested all of you that you can have you can you can go and have a look at the topic called money laundering although it was recently tested but you can go and have a look at it uh, the topic called money laundering and in this way your topic number a will be somehow covered and what about topic number g as far as topic number g is concerned you have to keep a very strong eye you have to keep yourself you know checked when it comes to acca's recent technical articles if there is any recent technical article about the current issue just around the exam you got to prepare that so ignoring a and g or eliminating a and g we are left with b c d e and f so the day one was all about audit risk business risk risk of material misstatement and the professional marks so the day one was very much focused on the question number one and it was very much focused on the syllabus area d yesterday was a very powerful day i would say because we covered the syllabus topic number b professional and ethical considerations along with quality control and practice management so the day two was a very productive day as far as i am concerned and if you have attempted those questions which i mentioned yesterday which i literally requested you yesterday you are right at, you're on the right track to you know make sure the things are under your control so now assuming that with the help of day one and with the help of day two and along with the homework along with the you know effort along with those sleepless sleepless nights along with all that effort i am assuming and i'm hoping that you guys are feeling better with respect to syllabus area b c and d now what so this is day three and we have got one area for the today's target so that one area is completion review and reporting which is the syllabus area e now why only one area completion review and reporting why only one area on day three because completion review and reporting will have at least 25 marks of your final exam the question number two or the question number three of your final exam that is the 25 mark question so one of the 25 mark question will definitely be on completion review and reporting it's the examiner's choice if if she wants to she can go all out for the completion and review for 25 marks she if she want to she can emphasize more on reporting so it more or less it will be a blend of completion review and reporting obviously there are multiple optional options there are multiple exam requirements so the examiner has got this leverage and this choice how she's going to maneuver the exam requirement but as of now completion review and reporting will give you straight 25 marks in fact if i have to attempt the exam on monday 6 june 2022 trust me i'll be starting my exam from that particular question on completion review and reporting yes i am 
very much confident with this narrative if i have to attempt the exam my strong suggestion to all of you start with this particular question because it's a short short question we all know what the exam requirement would look like and what area will be tested what kind of questions can we we can expect so before we move on to the today's targets today's agenda today's topic what about tomorrow tomorrow we'll be covering other assignments the audit related assignments why only one syllabus area for tomorrow because in our syllabus there are six other assignments so it's a massive job it's a very hectic job so the tomorrow's class will be on other assignments and mind you those students who tend to fail the exam or the common characteristic or the attribute of the failure student is that they tend to ignore quality control they tend to be overconfident with respect to professional and ethical consideration and they tend to you know ignore or leave this topic called other assignments on choice so i hope you are not going to commit the mistake yesterday's class and the tomorrow's class those two classes lead to the failures otherwise normally everybody goes well prepared for risk and everybody goes well prepared for completion review and reporting so we all know how pathetic the pass rate of triple a is okay let me start with my ritual and that is why triple a students fail so much why the failure is so high the top of the line reason is majority student like yourself you guys are not attempting questions on the acca's practice platform as a result you are not familiar with the platform as a result your typing speed is not top notch so what you can do that you can counter that so today is what 18th of may you still have got more or less 19 18 days so you got to type for at least four or five hours on the daily basis on the acca practice platform so that's one reason of high failure but you can counter that second reason majority students who are going to fail this paper unfortunately they won't familiarize themselves with the marking scheme marking scheme is a very challenging one and as you guys said earlier that there is a huge temptation great temptation when it comes to triple a to override no 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 we are not going to override we we have to focus we have to stay focused we have to uh, evaluate the exam requirement we have to, we have to think about the marking scheme and we need to type in accordance with the marking scheme there is no point of excessive writing we should not be idealizing the ideal past paper answers rather we need to extract an attainable answers out of that we should not ignore bf b is the ethical and professional issues which students tend to assume that they know it because they studied in double a and the syllabus area f is other assignments which we will be exploring in great detail tomorrow you should attempt two mock exams and you need to make sure one of the mock exam you need to attempt in the month of may and one of the mock exam in the earlier dates of the june so and you have to make sure your mock exams at least one of them should be marked by an expert tutor so as i told you earlier the today's plan is completion review and reporting last but not the least what should be your plan of action after the webinar i think you all must be you know absolutely well familiar with the plan you got to prepare eight most recent past papers along with those questions which we are solving in the webinars we need to make sure we read each and every examiner report we need to make sure we come up with our own notes for the typical sentences you need to study five technical articles which i will share with you once we are done with the webinars last but not the least you should master your four professional exams on a daily basis it's a gift from your examiner plan your mock exam plan a date you know make a schedule for yourself okay fine 30th and second 30th may then leave 31st and first in between and then second so these these two dates could be your your plan for the mock exam so you got to plan for it you got to keep an eye on the mock exams type type and type so that on the exam day you don't have to face the timing issue you don't have to face you know you don't have to think much and words and sentences should be you know coming out of your brain coming out of your hands as smoothly and as spontaneously as it could be so you got to type type and type so this is it now if anyone is having any confusion or any uh, kind of query or concern please feel free to contact me 
so this is my whatsapp number you can always contact me for any kind of confusion you are more than welcome now it's time to start today's topic give me a second okay so uh hi and hello to everyone so whatsapp groups will be provided don't worry about it okay let's continue okay then now it's time to start today's topic which is called completion review and reporting so here we go 25 marks out of the final 100 marks available one of the questions in your final exam will definitely be on completion review and reporting so this has to be your one of the best areas of your and from out, out of your entire syllabus so if i have to choose two most important areas two most well prepared areas it has to be completion review and reporting and the risk all kinds of risk business risk risk of material misstatement okay what about completion and review so let's divide the topic into two parts completion and review and then we'll explore reporting what's completion and review so once we are done with the audit or once we are almost done with the audit that stage is called completion we are almost there we are almost finishing it and what's review once we are done with the audit we need to review things before drafting the auditor's report so let's talk about completion and review recent events may result in adjustments to the financial statements maybe there is a need for some kind of an some kind of an adjustment or maybe there is a need for some kind of a disclosure to be added the auditor will also evaluate the effect of any uncorrected misstatements at the end of the audit at the time of completion and review as an auditor i will evaluate whether there are any uncorrected misstatements which which may lead to modification in the audit opinion so all those uncorrected misstatements which were immaterial on their own as an auditor i have compiled them and at the end of the day i will evaluate whether those uncorrected misstatements could lead to modified opinion if that's the case i need to have discussion with the management and i need to ask them to write it off or to make the make the necessary adjustment what about the exam in the exam you may have to evaluate misstatements and suggest additional audit procedures to be performed to reach a conclusion on such matters before stating the impact to the report if the issues are not resolved now try to understand this could be one of your exam question so you will evaluate certain misstatements certain situations so the client would have made certain accounting treatment you will evaluate that you will judge the materiality you will you will evaluate what accounting standard is relevant then you will then you will suggest to the client that these are the adjustments you need to perform if they are going to perform those adjustments well done things will be you know okay but if they are not willing to make those adjustments you have to consider the impact on the audit report and the audit opinion what about this other topic the grand topic the almost in every exam it is going to be tested in the march 2022 there was hardly anything on the audit on the report criticism so this is a very common thing what about reporting so one of the question in the exam will focus on completion and reporting as we all know that and reporting audit reporting may be examined in several ways there are multiple ways to test the topic called audit reporting number 
describe the implications for the auditor's report if the issues identified during the audit are not resolved so just imagine you guys are the client you guys are the management so you have not performed let's say you have not made compliance with is 36 impairment so describe the implications as an auditor as a student i will discuss the issue from the question i will discuss the materiality i will discuss the relevant accounting rule or standard and then i will propose the correct accounting treatment but if you are not going to make that correct adjustment it will have impact on the audit report and it will have impact on the audit opinion provided its material so this is the first type of question which you also encountered encountered in your double a describe the implications for the auditor's report if the issues identified during the audit are not resolved the second type of exam requirement with respect to audit reporting and this is where the triple a really begins because this was something which you did not encounter in your double a the topic is called or oh, well the exam requirement is called critically evaluate so you have to evaluate you are not supposed to redraft you are not supposed to rewrite critically evaluate the extract of a draft report now what do i mean by extract of a draft report extract means that the examiner is not going to give you a full fledged 100 percent audit report no 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 examiner is going to give you a chunk out of the audit report an extract of the audit report so you have to critically evaluate the extract of the draft auditor's report so you have to identify what is wrong with it what's the mistake what are the mistakes in the draft auditor's report and you have to explain why you consider it as a mistake so you have to identify the mistake from the question and then you have to explain that's the beauty and that's the rule of the triple a you have to identify something from the question and then you have to come up with an explanation so what is wrong with it what is wrong in the audit report and you have to explain why you think that's wrong third and the last exam requirement which we are going to evaluate in the today's session is explain the matters explain explain the matters so again we'll identify the issue from the question but we have to explain the matter explain the matters the auditor should communicate to those charged with governance so as an auditor we have to follow auditing standards and one of the auditing standard isa 260 says that you those significant matters which are relevant to the audit which are relevant to the financial reporting process or anything which is significant or important if you are going to identify those you need to report you need to share your findings with those charged with governance so explain the matters which you believe are extremely important and you are going to communicate examiner could ask you why you think this is important why you are communicating it why you think what's the justification behind, behind your communication so you need to highlight the importance so these are the exam requirements relevant to the reporting are you clear with the exam requirements can i have some kind of confirmation are you clear with the exam requirements okay uh Umair has posted very same thing again and again. Please discuss the marking scheme. Yes, we'll discuss the marking scheme of the analytical procedures. No, don't, don't worry. We are going to do it either today or tomorrow. Don't worry. I remember that. Thank you. Uh, audit procedures, further audit procedures should only be suggested only if asked, right? Absolutely, Akil. If, if the examiner has asked you for further procedures, only then you have to provide it. Otherwise, no. Mohammed Diaz is clear. That's great. How deeply we have to discuss about the accounting standard in matters to consider question. You are not supposed to write in a, you know, you, you should not go in extraordinary detail, but you have to, you know, you, you, you need to explain the crux. You need to explain the bottom line of the standard. Again, as a student, I would suggest you extract those sentences from all those questions and make your own notes. Is this clear, Omer? Okay, Candy is clear, Isabel is clear, Hassan is clear. Okay, Hans is clear, Taruna is clear. Okay, great. Thank you, Phillips. Thank you very much. Triple A 
is not so difficult neither it's not that easy actually time challenging is the most difficult thing in AAA. so we need to evaluate how far or how deep we are going to take our answers the real agenda is to attempt all the parts with equality so we don't have to you know write a book on question number one and we end up scoring nothing in the question number three so that we need to maintain a balance when when attempting the mock exam when preparing ourselves and same goes for the final exam okay omar is good to go let's go then now before i start today's topic i need to explore what is audit report and it's extremely important because today's questions are highly relevant to the audit report so we need to understand what is audit report all over the world there are two types of audit reports please imagine i'm talking about the audit report so there are two types of audit report number one number one unmodified audit report number second the opposite of unmodified report is modified audit report there are two types of audit report unmodified audit report and modified audit report now i think we need to start with what unmodified audit report now what's unmodified audit report unmodified audit report is a report where the auditor will express that the financial statements are representing a true and fair view not only that there are two characteristics of unmodified audit report now please please keep that in mind or make some notes for yourself there are two major characteristics of unmodified audit report characteristic or attribute number one the auditor will always express that the financial statements are representing or expressing a true and fair view that's the attribute number one of the unmodified audit report but i'm not stopping here there is this there is another second characteristic or second attribute an unmodified audit report will not have any additional communication paragraph i'm giving you 30 seconds 60 seconds to let it sink in unmodified audit report has got two characteristics two attributes number one the opinion will always be that the financial statements are expressing a true and fair view number second attribute there will not be any additional communication paragraph it is going to be a straightforward typical audit report is this clear can i have confirmation is this clear to all of you uh sharma you will figure out those notes once you will join the whatsapp group don't worry about it don't worry about it you will find those thing all that stuff from the description of the whatsapp group so ignore it don't worry about the content okay athna has asked me to repeat it there are two types of audit reports unmodified audit report and modified audit report and it's very important for your AAA exam now please ignore the modified audit report for like five minutes or ten minutes so we are left with one thing only and that is the most pleasant thing and that is unmodified audit report now unmodified audit report is the one which is having two characteristics number one the first characteristic the first uh, indication that it is an unmodified audit report the auditor's opinion will be that the financial statements are expressing a true and fair view the second characteristic is within that audit report there won't be any additional communication paragraph there won't be no additional communication paragraph is this clear to all of you what's unmodified audit report can i have confirmation yes please yes 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 okay clear now let's explore what unmodified audit report is let's go into the details so an unmodified audit report will always have a title the title would be independent auditors report if you ever figure out that the title is not independent auditors report 
you should raise it as a mistake in the draft auditor's report. Don't forget it. Addressee. The addressee are always the members of the company, the real owners of the company. If you ever figure out that the addressee is members of the company plus standard chartered bank, you should consider it as a mistake in the audit report. Number third paragraph will be auditor's opinion paragraph. And in an unmodified audit report, the opinion will always be what? True and fair view. The fourth paragraph is actually the bodyguard of the auditor's opinion paragraph. It's a complementary paragraph. In the basis for opinion paragraph, the auditor will express that on what grounds, on what basis in the preceding paragraph, the auditor has expressed the opinion. So in the basis for opinion paragraph, the auditor will let you know that how did he arrive at the opinion which he has or she has expressed in the third paragraph. So it's a complementary paragraph, the fourth one along with the third one. Dear students, always remember the sequence of this title addressee auditor's opinion basis for opinion will never ever change. They are always in the same sequence. One, two, three, four. What about the fifth paragraph? The fifth paragraph is called CAMS, also known as key audit matters. And the key audit matter paragraph is a mandatory paragraph when the company or the client is a listed client. If the client is not a listed company, you can skip this paragraph as an auditor. If you can, if you want to, you can skip it. But for the listed company, the CAMS paragraph is a mandatory paragraph. Number six paragraph is called other information paragraph. Okay. As an auditor, you are supposed to audit the financial statements and the financial statements are those numbers, those statements, statement of financial position, statement of profit or loss and all that along with the disclosures. As an auditor, you are not supposed to audit other information. You are not supposed to audit other information. So in the other information paragraph, you would like to highlight two things. A, you have not audited other information. B, according to the auditing standard, it's your responsibility to read out the other information. So you should highlight in the other information paragraph that the audit opinion does not cover all the other information. So the audit, we haven't we have not audited other information, but we have read other information. So this is the sixth paragraph. The seventh paragraph would highlight the responsibilities of the management specifically with respect to preparation of the financial statement with respect to the internal controls relevant to the financial reporting process. The eighth paragraph will be the will be a paragraph which will highlight the responsibilities of the auditor. Those two paragraphs, the responsibilities of the management and the responsibilities of the auditor. Those two paragraphs are there to minimize the expectation gap. They are there just to make sure nobody is having a wrong belief. Everybody should be crystal clear with respect to the responsibilities of both the management and the auditor. The ninth paragraph is a paragraph in which the auditor will report on certain local laws and regulations if they are applicable. The 10th item or the 10th content would be the name of the engagement partner. Yes, the name has to be clearly mentioned on the audit report. Then comes the signature. Signature of the engagement partner. Then the auditors address the audit firms address and then last but not the least there has to be the date of the audit report where on exactly the date where the audit report was signed. This is it. Are you all clear with this unmodified audit report before you answer my question? Please don't forget if it is an unmodified audit report. There will not be any other paragraph apart from the one which I've mentioned. And the opinion will be the financial statements are expressing what a true and fair view. So there are two characteristics of unmodified audit report. A, the opinion will be that the financial statements are expressing a true and fair view. B, there won't be any additional communication paragraph. Are you clear with this unmodified audit report? Okay, hold, 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 hold. Uh, who is the addressee for a private company, sir? Again, the members of the company. Akil, it's the members of the company. 
Umair, question. In other information, auditor check the consistency of the financial statement with other, other report. Yes, according to auditing standard 720, as an auditor, I have to read out the other information just to make sure. Please understand. Just to make sure there is no mismatch between the other information and the financial statements. So I'm trying to verify whether the financial statements and the other information are consistent or not. I'm not going to audit other information. If I will be able to figure out any inconsistency, I will evaluate whether that inconsistency is in is in the financial statements or it is in the other information. If it is in the financial statement, I will request the management to you know adjust it. If they won't adjust it and it is material, I will modify my opinion. If they are not going, to, if the adjustment requires in the other information. I can't modify my opinion. I cannot because the audit opinion does not cover other information. Yes, but I will highlight that inconsistency in the other information paragraph by making a sub paragraph. Okay, hold, hold, hold. Uh, there are many questions, an important one. So, Mohammed Ayaz has asked a question after Umair what to write in CAM's paragraph in case of unmodified audit report. CAM is a paragraph where the auditor would like to highlight the significant audit risk the judgmental areas during the audit important factors which the auditor encountered during the audit and auditor would also like to highlight and make the users understand how the auditor responded so remember in your double a you used to identify and explain audit risk and you used to write the auditor's response so in the cams i would like to let you know the public the addressee that how did I manage? Please, I ask, keep that thing in mind that CAM will not be utilized or CAM will not highlight any material misstatements. All those items which will be used in the CAMs are absolutely in accordance with the relevant accounting standards. Yes, the auditor found those very important and difficult. Yes, the auditor, you know, somehow managed it. That's why the auditor is highlighting them in the CAMs. What's the beauty of CAMs? It will improve the understanding of the company. Uh, it will, you know, make things clear for the members of the company. I hope that answers your question. I asked. We'll explore cams today in more detail. Okay, wait, wait, wait. What is MURGC paragraph? So Candy has asked a question. MURGC, please give me 10 more minutes. I need to explore unmodified audit report when I will be exploring unmodified audit report only then I will discuss MURGC because MURGC is part of the unmodified sorry MURGC is part of the modified audit report. So let me explore modified report first. Okay, Zizinga has asked EOM paragraph emphasis of meta paragraph is again part of the modified audit report. So I have not started the modified audit report as yet. So hold on, hold your horses. When reading the other information, what if say the KPIs are misleading prepared by management? Yes, if the KPIs in the other information are misleading, I cannot modify my audit opinion provided the financial statements are correct, but I can emphasize or I can highlight the fact that there is an inconsistency between the financial statements and the other information. I hope that answers your question again. Is there supposed to be MURGC after basis? Uh, this is again the question is relevant to the modified audit report. I have not started as, as yet. Yes, MURGC will come after right after the basis for opinion before CAM. MURGC is far more important, so it will be before cam and right after it will be on the fifth number chairman information does that go in other information absolutely yes umar nawaz that go in other information sir if going concern is disclosed and the financial statements are made on a breakup basis then the audit auditor give emphasis of meta paragraph but the opinion is modified if you want to highlight something relevant to the going concern even if the client has made the proper adjustment proper disclosure you cannot use emphasis of matter paragraph on us because you should use murgc paragraph we used to we used to use emphasis of matter paragraph like three four five years ago but things have changed now in the unmodified audit report there is a thing called murgc paragraph i'll explore that in a while and i hope you are clear as of now 
Uh, where is emphasis of meta paragraph? Umar, hold your horse, horses. Uh, KND, yes, scams is only for listed companies. Yes, scam is not mandatory for private companies. Okay, Nashir has asked a very tricky question. Why MURGC? Why the presence of MURGC will be considered as a modified audit report? Because it's not normal. The client is facing an uncertainty related to going concern. And that uncertainty is so critical and crucial that as an auditor, I would like to highlight that. Now that's beyond normal. So once I'm adding that extra paragraph in the audit report, the audit report would be considered as modified. That will not extraordinarily affect the share price of the company because the opinion is not modified as yet. Because of MURGC, the opinion is not modified. Only the report is modified. That's the beauty. That's the twist. Hold your horses. I'll explore that. Welcome, Nasheed. What are some elements presented in other information which link back to financial statement? Any examples? Such as if the chairman's report is saying that the revenue has increased by 20%, but as a matter of fact, the revenue has only increased by 12%. So this is one example. Is this clear? Okay. Thank you very much, Even. Thank you very much. I think I'm done with all those questions. Every question. I'm done with all questions. Now hold. Okay. Manoj has got something. What if everything is correct, but in auditor's judgment, there is one which auditor think that they should be addressed to shareholder and and he add the other meta paragraph than what we call motive. Manoj, I, I somehow lost it. If everything is flawless in the financial statements, but as an auditor, there is something in the other information which I want to highlight. So I will use other meta paragraph. If there is something as an auditor which I want to highlight, but it is part of the financial statements, including the disclosure, I will use emphasis of meta paragraph. If there is something which I want to highlight and it is relevant to the going concern, I will use MURGC paragraph. Manoj, how does that sound? Are you clear with the three different situations? Yes, Nasheed, I can repeat all that, although you guys are not allowing me to move forward. Okay. Please repeat again. Okay, Omer, why not? Okay, hold. Okay, Fazila, I will repeat. Listen. As an auditor, there are three additional communication paragraphs up in my sleeves. There are three additional communication paragraphs. All those three paragraphs. If you are going to use one out of the three, two out of the three, or even if you are going to use three out of the three. If you are going to utilize any of the three paragraphs, the audit report will be considered as a modified audit report. And please keep that thing in mind. Those additional communication paragraphs have got nothing to do with the audit opinion. So I'm assuming that the financial statements are expressing a true and fair view. But as an auditor, I want to use one of the three or two of the three or three of the three additional communication paragraphs. When I'm going to use those additional communication paragraphs, the audit report will be considered as modified audit report without impacting the audit opinion. So that's modified audit report without modifying the audit opinion. Are you clear up till now? Can I have yes? Then I need to move forward. Can I, are you clear? Okay, Nasheer and Momer, fantastic. Okay, clear, clear, clear. Very good. Now, what are those three additional communication paragraphs? The first additional communication paragraph is called MURGC paragraph. If as an auditor, I believe that there is an uncertainty related to going concern faced by the client. And that uncertainty is fully accounted for, adjusted by, disclosed by the client. So everything is perfect in the financial statement, right? Everything is perfect in the financial statement. Now, Manoj, I, I hope you, 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 you will agree with me. Considering everything is perfect in the financial statements, I cannot modify my opinion. But as an auditor, I believe that uncertainty related to going concern is so crucial and important that I want to highlight that. So if I want to highlight that, I will use a separate new paragraph, which is called an additional communication paragraph. And that paragraph is called MURGC paragraph. 
so material uncertainty related to going concern paragraph will highlight something which has been correctly adjusted or disclosed by the client and it's particularly relevant to what one word or one phrase particularly relevant to what help me out The MURGC paragraph will be used to highlight an uncertainty relevant to what? Yes, Evian. Thank you very much, Umar, as well. Nasheed, yes, going concern is the word. Fantastic. There you go. So that's the first additional communication paragraph. Thank you, Fazila and Phillips. Thank you, Mayor. Well done. Well done. All of you. Okay. What about the second additional communication paragraph the second additional communication paragraph and the third additional communication paragraph both are having the same agenda emphasis of meta paragraph is the second other meta paragraph is the third both are having the same agenda now what's the agenda as an auditor i truly believe and i'm confident that the financial statements are expressing a true and fair view but there is something which i believe that it is important for the users of the financial statement to understand so i will use either the emphasis of meta paragraph or other meta paragraph now you might be wondering why there are two different paragraphs emphasis of matter and other matter emphasis of meta paragraph will be used to highlight something which has been correctly adjusted or disclosed by the client within the financial statement so it will highlight something from the financial statement relevant to the financial statement Whereas, whereas other meta paragraph, by the way, emphasis of meta paragraph will not highlight something relevant to going concern because for that there is a separate paragraph called MURGC. Now, the other meta paragraph will highlight something which has got nothing to do with the financial statement. So the client has not adjusted it. So the client has not made the disclosure. Rightfully so. They were not supposed to adjust it. They were not supposed to make that disclosure. It has got nothing to do with the financial statement, but as an auditor, you want to highlight that. For example, there is an upcoming health and safety law, you know, designed and established by the government, and that upcoming health and safety law would be extremely important for my client, and I want to highlight that. Or there is an upcoming accounting standard by the International Accounting Standard Board, so that upcoming accounting standard is not reflected in the financial statements but as an auditor i want to highlight that so that thing which is not part of the current financial statement but still if you want to highlight that you will use the paragraph called other meta paragraph am i clear now yes it could be anything from management commentary but please financial statements and disclosures this if you want to highlight something out of it there was a massive impairment expense management has correctly charged that expense they have fully disclosed it in accordance with i36 you want to highlight that use emphasis of meta paragraph there is a legal case ongoing which creates doubt over the going concern of the company the client has made clear disclosure of it the client has made a clear provision of it you want to highlight that use murgc paragraph the there is an upcoming health and safety law or anything else which is not part of the current financial statements use other meta paragraph what kindly explain the difference between cam and emphasis of in the cam we tend to highlight significant audit risk and we tend to explain how did we manage it in the emphasis of meta paragraph we just want to highlight something for the users understanding Okay, Akil has got a question. If chairman does not amend his statement according to the auditor's request, then we mentioned this in other matter paragraph. Yes, without modifying the opinion because our opinion does not cover the chairman's report. Are you clear now? Okay, thank you, Ivan. Zishan is Zishan. Are you clear? Okay, great. Emphasis of matter is not significant to the auditor, but the users yeah kind of so fazila has asked a question sir does mistakes in other information have to do anything with other meta paragraph yes if there is an inconsistency as an auditor you got to judge whether the mistake is in the financial statements or other information if the mistake is in financial statement that will have an impact on the audit opinion but assuming the problem is not in the financial statements you will request the management to you know adjust the other information so that that inconsistency could be you know removed 
if they are not willing to do that you will highlight that inconsistency in your other meta paragraph other information paragraph i beg your pardon yes nashir you are right okay sajad has raised a question welcome sajad going concern para wouldn't it necessary to give going concern paragraph in case there is no material uncertainty so what sajad is trying to ask if there is no material uncertainty related to going concern things are you know smooth as silk perfect the grass is green yes you don't need to add on murgc paragraph you don't have to sajad are you clear okay ibrahim has uh, ibrahim has asked a question where these three additional paragraphs would be added give me 5 minutes i need to cover that topic you, the questions are too much so i'm unable to move on to the topic sir what is the difference between other matter paragraph and other information paragraph from majbeen other matter paragraph is used to highlight something which the auditor believes is is important for the user's understanding other information paragraph is a is a normal paragraph it's not an additional communication paragraph which is used by the auditor to highlight the fact that i am not the auditor of other information is this clear majbeen other information paragraph is a normal paragraph part of the unmodified audit report okay ali akbar ikbal has raised a question welcome ali auditor get, auditor can use other information section of the audit report to address any material misstatement such as the chairman statement in annual report in the other information paragraph you can highlight a material inconsistency only the in the other information not in the financial statements ali is this clear in case group management decides to close operations of one subsidiary does that create murgc for subsidiary report well i am not i am not in a position to answer that maybe that subsidiary is not material at all maybe maybe that subsidiary is extremely material so i can't say that maybe they've things they've they've got everything covered i i, I can't answer that okay so now it's time if you could please allow me to cover this topic so there are two types of audit report i'll answer your questions later on don't worry there are two types of audit report and as of now we have only covered one which is called unmodified audit report now it's time to explore the second type of audit report which is called modified audit report my dear students the unmodified audit report was not having any further classifications is this is this the case yes there was no further types in it but when it comes to modified audit report there are two types of modified audit report let's call them a and b modified there are two types of audit report unmodified without any further you know variety or types second modified audit report with further two types modified audit report with two types let's call them a and b what's a modified audit report without modifying the audit opinion what's that the report is modified but the opinion is still that the financial statements are expressing what true and fair view how is it possible modified audit report without modifying the audit opinion how is it possible it is possible when the auditor is going to use what those three additional communication paragraphs what are those number 1 murgc where an auditor would like to highlight something relevant to the going concern mind you which has been correctly adjusted or disclosed by the client that's why my opinion is unmodified but i want to highlight it using an extra additional communication paragraph that's why the report will be considered as modified emphasis of matter paragraph i will i would like to highlight something from the financial statement maybe but a something a, a a subsequent event which has been correctly adjusted by the client fully disclosed by the client maybe an extraordinary impairment expense maybe an extraordinary revaluation of the property plant equipment those items have been correctly identified adjusted and disclosed by the client 
I just want to highlight them. So I'm going to use emphasis of meta paragraph. The third paragraph is again used to highlight something, but that something has got neither with the going concern nor with the financial statements. So it is something beyond the financial statements, but I want to highlight that. So this is what we call modified audit report without modifying the opinion and that's the type number a of the modified audit report. Let's explore the type number B modified audit report with what? Finally, the real pain has arrived. This is the main event modified audit report with modified audit opinion. That's pretty painful. Why it's extremely painful because now the opinion is going to be modified. The share price will have a greater impact. The shareholders will be panicked. The stock market will tremble. So things are going to be, you know, very dirty now. So modified audit report with modified audit opinion. Now modified audit report with modified audit opinion. I wonder why the opinion is going to be modified. The opinion is going to be modified because of two possible reasons. Number one, financial statements are materially misstated. If the financial statements are materially misstated, as an auditor, you will come up with qualified opinion. What do I mean by qualified opinion? If the financial statements are materially misstated and they are not pervasive, the, the misstatement is material, but not pervasive. I will come up with qualified opinion. Qualified opinion means I will say apart from impairment or rather I would use except for impairment. Everything else is correct. So the impairment expense which I as an auditor believe is material is not correctly classified or expensed or charged or recognized or disclosed by the client. So financial statements are materially misstated. Yes material but not pervasive. I will come up with a qualified opinion. But just imagine the financial statements as an auditor. I believe are materially misstated and not only material. The misstatements are pervasive as well. So it's material and pervasive. So things are very deep. The overall set of financial statements seems to be useless. They are of no worth. They are not expressing a true and fair picture. No one can rely on that. There are many 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 mistakes. The impact of the misstatement is very deep. It could transform the current year profit into losses. It could transform the current year net assets into net liabilities. The overall set of financial statements seem to be useless. That's what when we call it pervasive. So if the financial statements are highly 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 material, we call it material and pervasive. I will come up with a diverse opinion. What do I mean by qualified opinion? Qualified opinion means except for so except for this air condition, everything is okay, fine, correct. But if in this room the air condition is not correct, the fan is not correct, the tables are not correct, the laptop is not correct, the floor is not correct, the door is not correct. I can't say this is not correct, this is not correct, this is not correct, this is not correct, but everything else is correct. In that case, I would come up with a very harsh opinion, very, very bitter opinion, and that is adverse opinion. So the modified audit report with the modified opinion, it could be because the financial statements are materially misstated. And now it's a you need to evaluate whether the financial statements are materially misstated, but not pervasive or the misstatement is material and pervasive. Second portion or the second part, the last part. What if you as an auditor, you are unable to obtain sufficient appropriate evidence? So if you are unable to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence, it's what we call scope limitation. So you are not able to gather sufficient appropriate evidence. If you are not able to gather sufficient appropriate audit evidence as an auditor, you will modify your opinion again. Now you need to judge whether that scope limitation, whether that situation where you are unable to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence, whether it is material or it is material and pervasive. If it is material only but not pervasive, you will again come up with qualified opinion paragraph. This qualified opinion paragraph and the and the one over over there on top of the screen. These are two different qualified opinion paragraphs. In this case, I will say I don't have evidence regarding this one, but except for that everything is correct. Earlier on I said this is not correct, but everything else is correct. So as an auditor, if you are unable to obtain sufficient and appropriate audit evidence, you will come up with qualified opinion paragraph the qualified opinion paragraph because of the lack of evidence. But that lack of evidence has to be material, but not pervasive. 
but if that lack of evidence is both material and pervasive so you, if you are not able to audit the sales of the company you are unable to audit the non current assets of the company so i think there is nothing much left in that case the lack of evidence the scope limitation is not only material it's also pervasive so you can't say i don't know about this about this about that about this about that but everything is correct no you can't say that you will say that i am unable to express my opinion and that's what we call disclaimer of opinion is this clear is this clear okay philip says raise a question in reality do auditors issue adverse reports or opinion there is no terminology such as adverse report dear philips there is no terminology such as adverse report so there is a terminology called adverse opinion okay now let me rephrase your question in reality do auditors issue audit uh, adverse opinion yes why not but they will warn the management that dear management if you are not going to make this 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 adjustment you will face the consequences so hopefully they will make those adjustments in order to avoid the adverse opinion so yes if they are not going to make those adjustments why not i will come up with adverse opinion why not can use except for in adverse or disclaimer of opinion hasan sultan i did not get your question can use except for in adverse or disclaimer no 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 these are two different things when the financial statements are materially misstated you will use except for qualified when the scope limitation or lack of evidence is material you will use qualified except for but when the financial statements are both material and pervasively misstated you will say adverse when the lack of evidence is both material and pervasive you will say disclaimer so these are four different things hasan are you clear okay thank you hasan Mohammad Ayaz, what is the impact of immaterial misstatement on the audit report and audit opinion? Please explain, sir. Very, very, very important question. As an auditor, once in the practical life, I really hope so that all of you join some audit firm. Never ever go to the industry directly. Go for the freaking audit firm first. You need to invest at least one uh, one year. at least one year maybe two years maybe three years if you are lucky enough to grab an opportunity in the big four invest three years in fact add one more one more month because of me but at least one year is mandatory in the audit firm if you are a qualified chartered accountant without having experience of the audit firm trust me you are alone forever you are lonely forever you are incomplete forever so never ever skip the audit firm and what's the best time to join the audit firm you know what's the best time right now tonight join now it's getting late uh manoj uh, which thing you are referring to please please mention what are you referring to okay so the question was which you know made me you know go towards the uh audit firm so that question was from i asked what is the impact of immaterial misstatements as an auditor if i am if i am going to figure out okay fine this is an immaterial misstatement i will request the management to adjust it case number 1 they are not going to make the adjustment case number 2 they are going to make the adjustment well first of all let's discuss case 2 if they are going to make the adjustment everything is okay move on happy story but case 2 if they are not going to make the necessary adjustment you must evaluate whether this misstatement is material or immaterial whether it is material or immaterial if it is a misstatement you should ask the management to rectify that adjust that if they are going to make the adjustment thank you very much job done move on although it's very hard to move on especially for this part of the world it's very difficult to move on right but you need to learn move how to move on okay uh, manoj i'll get back to you don't worry 
okay if if the adjustment which you require in the financial statement is immaterial what are you going to do you are going to note it down somewhere in the audit file all those immaterial misstatements which the client has not corrected you will note it down somewhere and at the end of the day at the review stage of the audit at the completion and review stage of the audit you will evaluate the aggregate of all those uncorrected misstatements if the aggregate of all those uncorrected misstatement is a material one the aggregate of all those uncorrected you will again talk to the management and you will ask them you have to make certain adjustments because the aggregate is material i can ignore one but i cannot ignore the aggregate so the management will make certain adjustments just to make sure that the aggregate of uncorrected misstatement is not a material one is this clear to everyone how we treat with the uncorrected immaterial misstatements is this clear can i have yes especially from ayaz and everyone okay thank you zishan umair ayaz manoj philips and all of you thank you very much that's great okay uh, what was the question of for the firm and the importance to join people can't get that okay manoj i was just referring to the importance of audit firm i was saying that all of you must join an audit firm during your studies as a student it's easier to join an audit firm rather once you are fully qualified and you, once you are an affiliate once you are an acc affiliate you are done with all the acc exams the next morning you will be expecting a white car with a white driver with a white hat right you know in front of your home but that's not going to happen unfortunately so it's better to to start the audit firm once you are a student because when you are a student and you are you are not done with acc mark my words your ego is not that big and you are hungry you are young you are you are you are fresh so you need to start and you need to join audit firm as soon as possible second advice from my side manoj you should not skip the audit firm so just imagine manoj or for that matter manzoor gets the job right after qualifying acca once you are an affiliate don't go into the industry directly join an audit firm learn things get the practical experience try to understand how the accounts are prepared try to understand how they come up with audit planning so you need to invest quality time in the audit firm then there will be a point of time then then there will be a point of time where you can jump into the industry and all those hardships and all those you know years of under be, being underpaid those all will be compensated trust me on that so is this clear that's wonderful manoj and everyone that's great so have patience and go to the audit firm okay okay if you are not will if you are unable to get uh you know uh some if you are unable to join big four go for top 10 sometimes the medium size audit firms are provide more learning opportunities as compared to big four big four has got a big impact big name big reputation big reputation no doubt about it but sometimes the learning opportunity is more in the medium size audit firm are you all having clear voice clear voice am i loud and clear my voice is clear okay clear 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 so uh, manzoor you need to rejoin there is a problem at your end okay now what about the exam question approach to exam question okay one other question what is the wording of disclaimer of opinion disclaimer of the wording of the disclaimer of opinion is that because of the lack of lack of uh, we are unable to gather sufficient appropriate evidence and we are disclaiming our audit opinion okay abdul samad hold your horses please 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 
I, I, I understand. Don't worry, we'll cover everything. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Now, what about the approach to exam questions with respect to audit report? There are two common styles of questions requirement relating to the auditor's report. When it comes to audit report, there are two typical exam requirements. Number one, the client has made certain accounting adjustments or disclosures, and you do not agree with that. Why you don't agree with that? Because you know your accounting standards, and the management has made it, you know, management is wrong. So you need to explain the implications for the auditor's report. How are you going to do that? I'll tell you later. The second exam question, which is very, 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 you know, common and highly, there are high chances that you will encounter this exam requirement in the June 2022 attempt. That is, that is, you need to critically evaluate or appraise the suggested auditor's report. It means the aud draft auditor's report. It's not published as yet. It's an ex the examiner is going to give you an extract and you have to evaluate. You have to critically evaluate the extract on the auditor support. So we'll explore the critical. Uh, we will explore how to critically appraise the audit report. But first of all, how are we going to attempt the question which is about the impact on the audit report? This is something which you studied in your double A as well. So first of all, you will have you will discuss the issue from the question. So you will discuss the issue from the question. Then you will discuss and calculate and relate the materiality. Then you will briefly discuss the underlying accounting rule or standard. Then you will express what accounting adjustment should be made by the client in order to avoid the modified opinion, assuming that they are not going to make that adjustment. What impact it will have on your audit opinion and what impact it will have on your audit report? Because if the opinion is going to be qualified opinion, the report will have will make an adjustment as well. So if the opinion is qualified opinion, the basis for opinion paragraph will be basis for qualified opinion. So this is something which you studied. I am super sure you studied in your double A. So what are the steps? First of all, you have to briefly discuss the issue from the question. So I for issue from the question. Then you will discuss and calculate and relate the materiality. Then you will explain briefly explain what the underlying accounting rule or standard says. Then you will propose the necessary adjustment in order to avoid the modified opinion. But I assume that the client is not willing to make those adjustments. There will be impact on the audit opinion and there will be an impact on the audit report. Is this clear to everyone? Can I have confirmation? Bilal Siddiqui, you will you will get the WhatsApp group link. Don't worry. So Taruna, are you clear? That's great. That's great. I asked. Well done. Okay, Akil has raised a question. Uncorrected misstatement is immaterial. Then yes, then you will express an unmodified opinion. True and fair. If there are misstatements, but those are immaterial, you can ignore them. The link for the completion review and reporting PowerPoint handout is not working. No problem. You'll join the WhatsApp group. You'll check the WhatsApp group's description and you'll get everything. Don't worry. Otherwise, I'll send you. Okay. Last exam requirement before me, we move on to the past paper question. Examiner would ask you for 12 marks, minimum 10 marks, otherwise for 15 marks, critically appraise the suggested auditor's report. What do I mean by critically appraise? It means you have to identify the mistake from the question and then you have to explain why this is a mistake. So two things you need to keep in your mind. What is the mistake and why you think that this is a mistake? What's the problem in it? So you have to identify the mistake from the auditor's report, the draft auditor's report, the extract, and then you have to explain what's wrong in it. So how can we attempt such questions? We need to look out for the wrong order of paragraphs. So just imagine after the opinion paragraph, there is cam. Although I told you after the opinion paragraph, there has to be basis for opinion paragraph. What if after basis for opinion paragraph, there is responsibilities of the management? 
rather than MURGC. So you need to watch out for the order. The order has to be correct. Title, addressee, opinion, basis for opinion, and then comes MURGC. If you need MURGC, MURGC will come up at five. If you don't need MURGC, CAMS will come up at five. So you need to know the order. Titles of the paragraph using the wrong wording. So you need to evaluate whether the titles of the paragraph is correct. Such example, if you are expressing qualified opinion due to material misstatement, your opinion paragraph would be qualified opinion paragraph. Your basis for opinion paragraph would be restated into basis for qualified opinion paragraph. So you need to come up with correct title of the paragraph. First possible mistake wrong order of the paragraphs. Second possible mistakes. The titles could be incorrect. Third, maybe this in the draft auditor's report, the CAM or the EOM or the OM or for that matter, MURGC has been incorrectly used. So I remember there was a past paper question where in the CAM, somebody was highlighting the MURGC in the EOM. Somebody was highlighting the going concern uncertainty. So you got to make sure that the usage of the paragraph is correct. Fourth possible mistake. There is a possibility that the misstatement is immaterial, but the opinion is a qualified opinion due to material mistake misstatement. So the opinion itself is not correct. So just imagine you should have, you know, you should have expressed qualified opinion due to the lack of sufficient appropriate audit, audit evidence, but you have expressed qualified opinion due to material misstatement. So the opinion could be incorrect. Inconsistent opinion wording with the name of the opinion. What if the title is not correct? The opinion paragraph, the title of the opinion paragraph is not correct. So what if your opinion is your opinion paragraph says basis for qualified opinion and in the opinion you are suggesting that you are expressing an adverse opinion. So the opinion is not consistent with the title of the paragraph. Another possible mistake which could earn you one mark is the unprofessional wording in the audit report. For example, you can't name the directors. You can't criticize them by saying they are not competent. You can't use the wording such as we feel like what's we feel like don't feel you have to be more authoritative. So you have to use professional words. Another possible mistake in the audit report could be insufficient explanation of the reason for the modification. You have to absorb it. You have to understand it. So you have you have you expressed the qualified opinion due to material misstatement. Okay, fine. You believe that the accounting treatment for the impairment is not correct, not in line with I-36. Now, in the basis for opinion paragraph, you should highlight how much the expenses are understated. How much the liabilities are understated? How much the profit is overstated? You need to explain the detail of that reason of the modification. So if you are not going to sufficiently explain the reason of the modification in the basis for opinion paragraph, that would be considered as a mistake. Are you clear with all those possible mistake misstatements uh, mistakes? Another misstatement which I have not mentioned in this list could be not referring to the accounting standard. Another mistake could be referring to the accounting standard, but not fully mentioning the name of the accounting standard. Let's say I'm saying, let's say in the draft auditor's report, I'm saying the inventory is overvalued and it is in, not in line with the relevant standard. What relevant standard? You should say in accordance with IS2 inventory. Okay, what if I'm saying the inventory is overstated in accordance with IS2? You should say IAS2 inventory. So these. This could be possible mistakes. Is this clear? Are you clear with what kind of mistakes we can? Okay, if you are unable to download the power place power PowerPoint slides Aisha, you can contact me and I'll share it. Don't worry. Otherwise, if you are part of the WhatsApp group, just check out the description of the WhatsApp group. Otherwise, I'll send it. Don't worry. Okay, that's nice. Everyone is clear. Okay, that's great. 
no umar if you are referring to a particular standard you should refer it along with the name and the code ias2 inventory it's not a mission impossible typically there are 10 or 12 counting standards which are more or less you know tested in the triple a exam so it's not that mission impossible yes we need to refer well if you are referring to ethics we need to refer it okay you need more practical examples let's go to the past paper question then we'll go to the past paper question but before we move on to the past paper question we still have got time let's see what the completion and review has to offer so when it comes to completion and review the examiner would ask for the matters to be considered and the audit evidence that you should expect on the audit file now in order to understand this exam requirement you have to listen to me just imagine you are an audit manager and we are your juniors we are audit seniors audit trainees and we have already completed a certain portion of audit so the audit is finished but audit is not finished until or unless you are going to perform a review so we are we are more or less complete but as a senior as an audit manager as an audit senior as a senior you need to perform a review how are you going to perform the review you are going to perform a review by first of all try you need to understand what was the issue you need to calculate the materiality you need to understand what was the relevant accounting rule or standard you need to consider what was the risk what incorrect accounting treatment could have been made by the client so this is what we call a mayor approach examiner would ask for the matters to be considered so as a student as a c audit manager you have to consider the situation you need to consider how are you going to consider you will obtain the audit file and you will review the audit file once you are reviewing the audit file as a senior you will consider few things number one what was the issue from the question then you will discuss the materiality you will you will you will, you will calculate the materiality you will discuss the accounting rule so what was the underlying accounting rule or standard then you need to be skeptic so you will express the risk what could be uh, what is the mistake there is a risk that client had might have made certain mistake or maybe the client's accounting treatment is wrong so you need to express your risk last but not the least considering the already the audit is already complete so definitely there would be some evidence in the audit file so you need to consider the evidences available in the audit file so this is a situational question you got to understand uh, this this is something which requires some kind of a practical exposure so just imagine you guys were auditing here in this particular warehouse for the last 10 days now you guys are done you have handed over the audit file to me as an as a senior as an audit manager what i'm supposed to do i will calculate the materiality of the you know items involved i will you know remind myself what's the underlying accounting rule or standard i will i will be skeptic i will not trust your work so i will consider what's the risk what could go wrong so i will consider the risk client's accounting treatment could be wrong or it is wrong and then i will evaluate the audit file in order to figure out whether the evidences you have obtained are are you know good enough or not so this is a common exam question in which as a senior you will be reviewing the work of your juniors which have already been performed you are not evaluating quality this is not a quality control based question you are not evaluating ethical issues this is this is something relevant to the financial statements and disclosures so it's it's the hardcore audit so the approach is called the mayor approach the mayor approach has got four items first of all you will calculate and discuss the materiality you might get one complete mark or even 1.5 mark if there are multiple options of you know multiple items of materiality if you are if you are able to calculate materiality for two items you might get 1.5 mark otherwise minimum one mark then you will, you will get another possible 1.5 mark by having discussion on the underlying accounting standards or rules again there is a possibility you might be able to discuss two different accounting standards so you might get more than 1.5 marks 
otherwise minimum 1.5 mark number third you are going to discuss risk what's risk risk means you have to express your skeptic attitude the client's accounting treatment could be wrong maybe they have not followed the relevant accounting standard they might not have recognized they might have recognized something like that last but not the least e stands for evidence what evidence you expect to find in the file so your audit team your juniors have already performed the procedures they have already obtained the evidence you are not going to perform a e i o u you are going to review the file and look whether those evidences are available or not so you are not going to inspect the purchase agreement you are inspect you are going to review or inspect the copy of the purchase agreement you are not going to you know inquire and inspect the loan agreement you are going to review the copy of the loan agreement because those items i expect there will be already in the file so this is what the question looks like first consider the materiality of the issue first of all briefly discuss the issue from the question itself then go to the materiality next discuss the appropriate accounting treatment then give the risk of material misstatement that would arise if the client has not followed the correct accounting treatment finally evidence means what you expect to be recorded on the file from your juniors so you are going to review the file is this clear to everyone can i move to the past paper questions now questions so i've got questions okay so there are affirmative answers from you guys that i need to move on okay great let's move then now i we need to solve two questions tonight the first question is called prearly company it's from june 2018 and the second question would be the second question would be kill mr company and kill mr company is from june 2019 so 2018 and 2019 we are going to solve full questions there are two questions available uh, by the way both of these questions are also part of your current exam kit both are available in your exam kits so we have got two question first we have got kill mr and the second one is called really well i would suggest that we before we start questions let's have let's have a break for 10 minutes so that once we start the questions we don't have to take the break what do you say about it yes kurat break and then questions yes akil can we take a small break absolutely yes all of whatever we have studied so far all that will be applied in those two questions trust me with the help of these two questions almost all the possible exam requirements with respect to triple a with respect to completion review and reporting will be covered so hang on don't go anywhere don't rely on the recording attend it live so that you know there is there there has to be some connection between you and me and i will be able to you know happily answer your questions even after the webinars provided we have got a connection so hang on let's have a break for 11 minutes right now it's 954 let's resume at 10:05 11 minutes thank you very much guys those two questions will cover everything keep it in mind thank you i'll see you after 11 minutes bye bye
okay then welcome back now it's time to start the past paper questions relevant to the completion relevant to the review relevant to the reporting and let's master us ourselves for the 25 marks of the possible 100 marks in our final exam so let's do it okay just a quick confirmation from your side am i clear am i absolutely loud and clear can i have a quick yes from one or two okay thank you very much thank you thank you thank you thank you okay great okay so this is the first question and we have got two questions let's see what the first requirement is <clears throat> comment on matters to be considered the moment i read i see comment the word comment one thing pops up in my mind the mere approach comment on the matters to be considered and explain the audit evidence you should expect to find during your review of the group audit working papers see you are a senior you are audit manager and you are working you are reviewing the work already performed by our by our juniors so you are reviewing you are performing the review who performs the review someone who is sufficiently experienced and senior that's what we studied yesterday in the quality control so comment on the matters how i'm going to comment i will briefly discuss the issue from the question and then i will straight away jump to materiality relevant accounting rule and i will express my professional skepticism the risk then there is an and and explain the audit evidence you should expect to find during your review of the group audit working papers in respect of each of the issues described above so the examiner has made you know examiner has divided the question into couple of issues so the marks are allocated in front of each each issue seven marks is for the first story set six marks is for the se second story okay let's start the question okay for a question such as this one for a question such as this one this first paragraph is only important for two things number one year end and most importantly in order to calculate materiality the relevant data will be available over here so watch out for the losses watch out for all those financial items because you need to calculate materiality let's start the question you are congratulations you are an audit manager in an audit firm which is called Braley company and you are responsible for the audit of use group and that's a group that's a question relevant to group you are reviewing the audit working papers for the consolidated financial statements relating to the year ended 31st march 20x8 so you are reviewing the working papers of the consolidated so you must be part of the you know parent company's auditor the group specializes in the wholesale supply of steel plate and sheet metals okay fine move on the draft consolidated financial statements recognize revenue of 7670 okay profit before tax of 55 profit has gone down as compared to the last year of 80 million and total assets just like the revenue has gone up 1560 barely and company audits all of the individual company financial statements as well as group consolidated financial statements so you are a very important auditor your audit firms audit all the subsidiaries and you also audit the parent company's audit uh, financial statements and naturally you also audit the group's consolidated financial statement the parent company's auditor is the one who is responsible to audit the group consolidated financial statements you must be clear with respect to this concept anyways the audit senior has brought the following matters regarding a number of group companies to your attention so I just, as i told you earlier there is nothing extraordinary in the first paragraph except for the fact that you need to calculate materiality and the relevant data is available over here i think we need to move on to the first part don't forget this is a question relevant to mere approach now before i move on to the question part a asks for the matters to be considered and the audit evidence that you should be on file during your review of the audit file and we will use the mere approach what's the mere approach after having a brief discussion from the question itself first of all you need to consider what the materiality 
the next item you need to discuss is the appropriate accounting standard or the accounting treatment the third item which you need to discuss is the risk of material misstatement just like the audit risk question why you think that the client's accounting treatment is wrong or why, why the client's, client's accounting treatment could be wrong you have to be skeptic finally the evidence is what you expect to be recorded on the file when you come to review so you are not going to obtain the evidence rather the you expect certain evidence on the file so you are going to review the file and you expect those evidences already be available in the audit file so this is the question let's go back to the question okay the group purchase 40 percent of the share capital and the voting rights in a company called Delhi Company on 1st May 20X7. What was the year end of the parent company? 31st March 20X8. So basically, their year started on 1st April 20X7, right? So uh, once once we were done with the April, on okay, it means how many months we are talking about? Is there anyone who can answer me quickly, quickly, quickly? How many cost? How many months we are we are looking up here? Thank you, Asan. 11 months. No, no, Athena, not 10 months, 11 months. We are only done with April. So it's about 11 months. Yes, Akhil. Yes, Julia and everyone. Thank you very much. 11 months. Manoj, I'll, I'll go back to your question after some time. Remind me. For now, I'm all geared up to this question. Okay. The group purchased 40% of the share capital. So the keyword is 40% on 1st may the date is also a keyword and that and that reminds me that these are 11 months you can write it somewhere parallel to this 1st may 2007 just to remind yourself so they not only purchase the 40 percent share capital they also purchase what 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 else they purchase anyone who can who can let me know along with 40 percent share capital what else they purchased What else did, did they purchase along with 40% shares? Yes, thank you very much, Bajapin and Ayaz. Well done. Voting rights. Well done. Well done. Hassan, Phillips, well done, all of you. The uh, Okay, the moment I have read this first statement, the group purchased 40% of the share capital and the voting rights in a company called Delhi Company on 1st May 20X7. What accounting standard pops up in your mind? What account? Thank you very much, Phillips. The accounting standard is called IAS 28 investments, investments in associates and joint ventures. That's the full name of the standard. Very well done. It's not about IFRS 3 business combinations, not at all. It's about IAS 28. Okay, let's continue. The group has also acquired options to purchase the remaining 60% of the issued shares at a 10 percent discount on the market value of the shares at the time of exercise so the company purchased 40 percent shares and company also purchased the option to purchase the remaining 60 percent of the shares and that too on a discounted rate whatever the market rate would be 10 percent discount that makes that purchase very very attractive the options are exercisable for 18 months from first may 20x8 so basically in the near future in the near future you can purchase those remaining 60 percent of the shares and that too on a discounted price Delhi companies draw financial statements for the year ended 31st march 20x8 recognize revenue of 90 million and a loss before tax of 12 million the group's finance director has equity accounted for Delhi company as an associate in this year's group account and has included a loss before tax of 4.4 million in the consolidated statement of profit and loss now what has happened here the group's finance director is treating this particular company as an associate so what he has done is that the loss for the Delhi company is 12 million use your calculator now what did he do that he has just you know performed
what did he do he did 12 million loss multiplied by 40% so multiplied by time apportionment of 11 divided by 12 so this is what 4.4 million looks like are you clear what the finance director is trying to do are you clear with this calculation which i just performed 4.4 million thank you so the let's imagine i am the finance director i realize that we have purchased a subsidiary one month after the you know current period current year oh, one when once the one month was lapsed so it was 11 month period i decided to consider it as an so as an as a not as a subsidiary rather as an associate why because there is a huge in incentive not to recognize it as a subsidiary why is that because there is an underlying loss and when i am going to make it 40 percent multiplied by the loss multiplied by 11 by 12 time apportionment i will be able to recognize a relatively low amount of loss if i need to consider it as a subsidiary what would be the accounting treatment then 12 million loss simply multiplied by 11 by 12 you are not going to multiply it by 40 percent so how are we going to draft this answer first of all we will have a brief introduction from the question and manoj was asking me earlier is there any importance of you know briefly introducing the question manoj you should briefly introduce your answer and you should try to copy stuff from the question so the key matter to be considered is the status of the investment in delhi company in the consolidated financial statements of the group so the the real question is whether this investment is a subsidiary or whether this investment is an associate that's the real question now how we are going to start this answer generally speaking or normally speaking 40 percent falls within the usual percentage of associate in accordance with is 28 investments in associates and joint ventures that's what that's how i'm going to start but another accounting standard which is called ifrs 10 says that if you have got the control over the you know associate you should not consider it as a associate rather you should consider it as a subsidiary so ifrs 10 contains specific guidelines where you have got the control over a particular investment maybe you have got the majority voting rights even if your holding is not greater than 50 percent you should consider it as a subsidiary so what's the accounting standard says according to ifrs 10 control and therefore status as a subsidiary may be based on the potential voting rights in this case d companies potential voting rights are exercisable in the near future and that too on a 10 percent discount and if it is on 10 percent discount who is going to miss it nobody every the company is going to grab that opportunity because it's an attractive opportunity 10 percent discount so that's why according to ifrs 10 this should be considered as a subsidiary the options therefore represent a substantial potential voting right and Delhi company's statement of profit and loss should be consolidated on a line by line basis rather than should rather than considering as, as an associate the 40 percent holding in Delhi company has been held for 11 months and as a result the revenue would be time apportioned 90 million the revenue is 90 million when you are going to time apportion it it is going to be 82.5 and you are going to calculate its materiality you are going to check the materiality of 82.5 with the consolidated revenue here is the consolidated revenue you can use the calculator 82.5 divided by 7670 into 100 check its percentage it's it's what it's 1.1 percent and the and the the materiality with respect to revenue starts with half percent so it's clearly the revenue is clearly material for the consolidated financial statement now what about the losses they have recognized only 4.4 million loss that's not correct ideally speaking they should have recognized 12 multiplied by 11 divided by 12 so ideally speaking they should have recognized what 11 million loss they have recognized 4.4 million loss so the difference is what 6.6 .6 million now you, you should calculate the materiality of 6.6 .6 million and once you are going to calculate the materiality of 6.6 .6 million you will realize that this represents 12 percent of the group's profit again this is material 
considering the fact that this is a loss making subsidiary or loss making investment there is an huge investment sorry there is a huge incentive not to consolidate it if it if it is a profit making company maybe i am willing to consolidate it but considering it's a loss making company there is a huge incentive not to consolidate it and that is why as an audit firm as an auditor you should exercise professional judgment and there are doubts over the integrity of the management so how uh, how 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 this answer how are you going to redraft your answer how are you going to redraft your answer so this first paragraph is what we call background from the question itself there is a you know sequences up up and down this in this answer here there is a discussion on what on the ifrs especially two of ifrs ifrs 10 and here and is 28 as well then what then there is a discussion on materiality now there are two different calculations on materiality number one revenue number second loss last but not the least you can also have a discussion on an additional element which is considering it's a loss making company so there is an extra incentive for the management not to consolidate it so all those ingredients are there materiality is there two different materialities for revenue and for losses accounting standard ifrs 10 is 28 you are going to say that normally speaking according to is 28 this should be considered as an associate but according to ifrs 10 if we are having potential voting rights if we can control it this should be considered as a subsidiary then you are going to calculate different types of materiality then you are going to express that considering the fact that this should be considered as subsidiary uh the losses are understated they are they should be recognized they are losses under recognized by 6.6 .6 million considering there is an the, the the subsidiary is loss making one there's an extra incentive not to consolidate it is this clear all those ingredients uh mohammed anas has asked a question how should how much should we write in accordance with 1.8 minute per mark scheme first of all you need you need to squeeze it you one point not 1.8 rather keep make it 1.7 secondly it's all about practice if you are going to practice five to six questions on mere approach you are going to type and learn automatically things will improve if you are absolutely well clear, clear with respect to the wording of the accounting standards you your speed will shoot up so finish off your point move on to the next split your answer Discuss the materiality in separate paragraphs. Discuss the accounting standard in separate paragraph. Discuss your risk. There is a risk that client is not willing to consolidate it because there is this the company is a loss making one. So express your risk. Follow the mayor approach. Let's check it out. Check out the marking scheme. So you need to discuss materiality. You will get. You will get 1.5 mark because there are a couple of materialities involved. You will have a discussion on IFRS 10. You will get another 1.5 mark. You will have a discussion on the fact that considering the voting rights are exercisable in near future and that too on a subsidized rate, this makes this this opportunity very attractive. And you will have a discussion about the losses. They should have recognized 11. They have recognized four. So as a student, you need to realize that the difference is four point. Uh, the difference is six point six million. This will give you marks. And there is an incentive not to consolidate because of the underlying loss. So all those factors are going to give you marks. Is this clear? Now, only one mark is available for the evidence you expect to find during your review of the audit file. What evidence are you expecting? first of all i am expecting that my juniors would definitely have acquired the legal documentations regarding this acquisition so that i could understand the potential voting rights so that i could understand the potential purchase options of the remaining 60 percent of the shares so i need i'm looking forward to the copy of the legal documents in order to understand when this acquisition what was made and what was that what were the terms and conditions so this is the first evidence i'm looking for secondly i need to review the working papers of my client in order to understand what's their share issued share capital and what about the voting rights 
what about the remaining 60 percent are the six are they are the sh uh, voting rights have been attached to those 40 percent so i need to review the working papers in order to understand what's the issued share capital what's the associated voting rights moreover this is a very sensitive issue you can always review the board minutes of the meetings and you will be able to understand whether Delhi companies board of directors are you know are fully convinced that they have transferred the, the whole voting rights to the parent company so you need to review the board minutes last but not the least you can get the written representation i'm sure the junior auditors have already obtained the written representation so you can review the written representation from the management in order to understand what influence what degree of influence they believe that the parent company will be able to exercise once they will exercise the share option so this was the part a let's go to the part b let's go to the part b if by chance the issue is material with respect to profit but not with respect to revenue should be considered as a potential material misstatement hamza has raised a very good question in the exam if it is material for one but immaterial for the other listen to me first of all you need to highlight that it is material for this and not material for that you'll get marks for that secondly from then on you should consider it as material if it is material for one but not material for the other highlight it but treat it as material okay sir so basically the error is that management has recognized it as an associate whereas it should be recognized as a subsidiary absolutely gold perfect that's what uh, that's what the question is all about the question is all about is 28 but the concepts of ifrs 10 so if somebody knows what is 28 says but somebody knows what ifrs 10 says with respect to the control that student will be able to get full marks out of it is this clear to everyone can i move on to the next part can i have some kind of confirmations other than question can i have some yes 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 okay thank you manoj majabeen for i ask move please thank you thank you okay everyone okay part two willis company is a foreign subsidiary whose functional and presentational currency is the same as the parent company so willis company is another subsidiary but that's a foreign subsidiary and the functional and presentational currency is same as the parent company and the remainder of the group so there is no issue the subsidiary specializes in the production of stainless steel and holds a significant portfolio of forward commodity options to hedge against the fluctuations in raw material prices so they 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 are going with with, with what they are utilizing derivatives and they are exercising options to you know you know mitigate their risk the local laws the local jurisdiction does not mandate the use of ifrs standards so that that foreign subsidiary willis company is not following ifrs and the audit senior has noted that willis company follows local gap okay they are allowed to use local gap whereby derivatives are disclosed in the notes to the financial statements but our accounting standard ifrs 9 says that the derivatives need to be recognized initially at no cost and the resulting change in the value should be charged in the profit or loss account as an as an expense or income i hope you know what ifrs 9 says dear students it is very important to understand one thing if i am a com i am a company operating in uk and one of my subsidiary is operating in let's say china the local company will follow the local laws and regulation local gap but once the financial statements will be consolidated as the auditor of the parent company i need to make sure that the accounts of those local company will be in accordance with the ifrs so that's the twist here that local company is looking using local gap no problem with that but once the consolidation will happen i need to make sure that those local com that foreign companies accounts are in accordance with the ifrs so they need to recognize the derivative they need to charge the resulting change in the value in the profit or loss account okay the disclosure note includes details of the maturity and exercise terms of the options and a director's valuation stating that they have a total fair value of 6.1 million as at 31st march 2008 
the disclosure note states that all of the derivative contracts were entered into the last three months of the reporting period so th three months have gone by so there must have been some fluctuation and they require no initial net investment okay fine normally they are recognized at no initial net investment or a, at a minimum minimal initial investment no problem with that but considering three months have gone by there has to be some kind of change and that change needs to be recognized or charged in the profit or loss account so how are we going to establish this answer so first of all i think we need to calculate the materiality and we need to calculate the materiality of this 6.1 million the fair value of 6.1 million you need to check the materiality with respect to profit because the initial investment was zero so 6.1 million you need to check the materiality with respect to profit what was the company's profit 55 million somebody please check the materiality Somebody please help me out. Thank you, Amar. 11%. Well done. Thank you, Daniel. Well done. Well done. Very good. Very good. Okay. Well done, Majabeen. Well done. Okay. So the fair value of the derivative at the year end is 6.1 million that's what i've derived from the question and it is material for the consolidated profit before tax as it represents 11 percent in isolation so it is material for the profit before tax but what about its materiality after all it's a derivative what about its materiality with respect to assets somebody check it out 6.1 million divided by 1560 so it's not material with respect to assets so somebody was asking this question earlier on if it is material for one perspective but not material for the other what happens then we'll consider it as material don't forget the mnemonic called wrap half percent for revenue one percent for assets five percent for profit so it is clearly material for the profit and it's not material for the assets is this clear is this clear great now so we have we are following the mayor approach we have discussed the materiality let's discuss the accounting standard accounting issue according to ifrs 9 financial instruments the derivatives are required to be recognized right ifrs 9 financial instrument requires the recognition of derivatives on the statement of financial position at their fair value at the year end so at the year end you need to recognize 6.1 million in the statement of financial position and whatever change it has you know in the change in the value that associated whether the gain or the loss should be charged or recognized in the profit or loss if it's an expense it will be charged in the profit or loss if it's a gain it will be recognized now the fair value of 6.1 million should therefore be included in the current assets so we need to recognize ideally speaking the the management should recognize this 6.1 million in the consolidated current assets and they should recognize this 6.1 million as an income the fair value of 6.1 million should therefore be included in the current assets on the group statement of financial position and given that the options were entered into the last three months for the period of no initial investment a fair value gain of 6.1 million should be recognized as an income are you my dear students are you clear with all this considering the initial value was zero at the year end whatever the value is that should be recognized as an asset or a liability uh, in the statement of financial position moreover that 6.1 million should be recognized as an income in the profit or loss account now we have discussed the materiality we have discussed so so this was the materiality the first paragraph then we went to the relevant accounting standards the second paragraph mayor approach now the risk what's the risk there is a risk the client has not recognized this asset what there is a risk in the consolidated financial statement they have not recognized this asset they have not recognized this income so the treatment of the derivatives under local gap is acceptable whatever the willis company has performed under the local laws is acceptable but when it comes to the consolidated financial statement the ifrs will prevail the auditor must also exercise professional skepticism with regard to whether the directors have the required expertise to value the derivatives and should consider the need for independent external evidence of the fair value of the options because it's a very subjective matter so there is a risk 
that the client's asset consolidated assets are understated the income is also under the profit is also understated and we might we need to consider whether the management has got the skills to value otherwise we need to consider some external expert is this clear are you clear with all that what evidence you need to look for first of all we need to look for the details of the fair value of the options based on the prices drive from an active market we need to look for some expert valuation we need audit doc we need to review the audit documentation regarding when that contract was made when the when its maturity so that we could figure out that whether it was entered or at zero cost or at what cost we need definitely the audit juniors had a discussion with the management regarding the accounting treatment so we need to review that uh, you know we need to review the discussion with the management in order to figure out what accounting treatment they have performed and what are their assumptions whether they they are reasonable or not yes the sheer profit and loss are understated well done yes it's a kind of an hedge contract well done okay what if you miss out the fact that it should be a subsidiary and treat it as an associate will you get the marks well you will get some marks for the calculation of materiality you will get some marks for the uh, evidence but you won't get marks for the relevant obviously your account if you have expressed the correct accounting treatment even then you'll get marks but if you apply the accounting treatment wrong you you'll lose marks so it all split into pieces okay akil has raised a question is akil is saying that he is absolutely clear when it comes to mayor approach apart from e so majority students are clear with m a r the e creates seems to create a problem first of all my dear students you need to extract two third of the total marks from m a r you only you should only left you should only leave one by third for the e so if there are eight marks available at least five marks could be extracted from m a r you don't need to go for more than three evidence if the question is for seven marks even two evidence could be enough now what about evidence evidence is something which you can master if you are damn good with respect to the substantive procedures of double, double a you have to reverse it a bit so you are not trying to apply aeiou rather you are assuming that aeiou or have already been applied and the evidence is in the file so you are not inspecting the purchase option agreement rather you are reviewing the option agreement in order to understand the maturity terms so there is a minor difference is this clear first part of the question so this was there was the sequence was slightly disturbed over here so this was the this was the accounting standard discussion in fact this was accounting standard discussion as well then this was materiality discussion quite a complicated materiality discussion and especially you need to figure out the loss which was not recognized and then you have to express your risk is this clear to everyone okay if you guys are clear we need to move to the part b part b you are also responsible for the audit of blackmore group a listed manufacturer of high quality musical instruments for the year ended 31st march 20x8 okay that's a separate client the draft financial statements of the group recognize a loss again a loss before tax of 2.2 million that's very important loss highlighted and the total assets of 14.1 million the audit is nearing completion and the audit senior has already drafted the auditor's report which contains the following extract so this is an extract from the audit report don't criticize there is no title there is not ad addressee there is no opinion paragraph because it's an extract so if it is starting from key audit matters i assume all those preceding paragraphs are already there it's an extract you got to understand what extract means so let's explore the extract but before we let's read the requirement for 12 marks critically appraise the extract from the auditor's report on the consolidated financial statements of the blackmore group so we need to discuss what 
we need to critically appraise the ex extract from the auditor support okay let's read the extract okay it starts with the key audit matters and the heading is valuation of financial instruments the group enters into structured forward contract to purchase materials used in its manufacturing process the valuation of these unquoted instruments involved guesswork and is based on internal models developed by group's finance director thomas mr thomas joined the group in january 20x8 and there is a there is significant measurement of uncertainty involved in his valuation as a result of his inexperience as a result the valuation of these contracts were significant to our audit the first mistake in this extract is which i have not told you earlier in the today's lecture but listen to me right now whenever we are going to start or whenever we are going to have discussion on key audit matters it is mandatory to first of all have an introductory paragraph on the key audit matters now what's that in the audit report whenever you are going to use key audit matters you should start with an introductory paragraph on key audit matters now what's introductory paragraph introductory paragraph on key audit matter would highlight what are key audit matters what is the importance and significance of the key audit matter and you should highlight that because of the key audit matter paragraph the opinion is not modified or you should highlight that the opinion also covers the key audit matters so key audit matter paragraph and opinion paragraph are not two separate things so this is the first mistake that i am unable to figure out where is that introductory paragraph so let's let's start let's read the solution key audit matters the section should include what an introductory paragraph what should you explain in that paragraph the importance and the significance of camps you should also clearly state that auditor is not forming a separate opinion on the items identified as camp so my opinion regarding the overall financial statement is the same for the camp my opinion on camp is not different don't consider that cam is something which is not relevant to my opinion so this is the first mistake what is the second mistake the second mistake which i see is the unprofessional word such as this guesswork you should not use the word such as guesswork because the guesswork is not a professional word right secondly another professional you know another wrong use of professional wording you should not highlight or blame the individual cause called mr thomas bolin third mistake you should not criticize him for his inexperience in the audit report and another mistake is that you have used the word called as a result the valuation of these contract was significant to audit you have not quantified the issue as a result the valuation of these contract was significant to our audit you have to quantify the issue you should explain what was the problem or what was the under related amount okay give me a second let me tell you the marking scheme see in general up to one mark for each well explained point what does that mean i told you earlier the marking scheme is a very tricky one it means normally speaking you will get one mark for one mistake but there could be a possibility where the mistake is a very complicated one such as it has got to do with opinion a complex one so you might be able to extract more than one mark but in general one mistake one mark okay this is an area of significant audit judgment with a high risk of material misstatement hence inclusion as cam is appropriate considering it is an area of high judgment very important so if the audit firm or the auditor is trying to disclose it in the cam it's perfect it's good it's you you should appreciate that but but what 
it would also aid users under this understanding further if the auditor's report quantified the size and the significance of the issue so this is the mistake so i'm i'm appreciating the fact that they are using cam in order to highlight the important issue but they have not quantified the issue there is no indication of the size and the quantification of issue if they they have did if they perform this this would have been a lot easier in order to understand things for the you know users of the audit report so this is another mistake the auditor should describe how the cam was addressed in the cam paragraph there is no indication how did the auditor respond what action the audit firm took so describe how the cam was addressed this is not available in the answer so this is another mistake moreover based on the current wording the users of the audit report would have no clear indication of how the auditor has gathered evidence over this area you just read the question by yourself are you clear with this paragraph number 1 how did the audit firm manage the issue i have got no clarity they believe that it is a high area sensitive area they believe it it requires this was very crucial the client performed the guess work what did the audit firm do no indication so they have not quantified the issue they have not explained their response they have not come up with an introductory paragraph so up till now three mistakes three marks let me repeat no introductory paragraph no quantification of the size or or, or the issue number third how did the audit firm respond it's not even available in the paragraph so three marks three mistakes you can split those mistakes in your own wording at the end of the today's webinar you, you have to drive your your own answer fourth mistake the use of unprofessional wording such as guesswork and uh, uh, and fifth mistake you cannot name and criticize the director so you are criticizing him because of his of his inexperience and you should not refer to the him by name so overall i believe there is an opportunity to score 4 to 5 marks out of this issue let's explore the marking scheme cam section should include introductory paragraph that's the first mark cam information should also highlight that we are not forming a separate opinion on it so that could also get one more mark two marks we have to appreciate that they are using cam and it's appropriate so this could give you three marks they have not quantified the size or the significance issue fourth mark they have not explained what was the auditor's response how did they manage it how did they counter it it's not mentioned fourth mark finance director name fifth mark you cannot criticize him for his inexperience sixth mark guess work that not a professional language so five six marks are available are you con feeling confident with respect to criticism of audit report now will you be able to extract five six marks out of the solution will you be able to reproduce your own, own answer tonight or tomorrow ayaz is super sure what about others hamza shayan has raised a question shouldn't cam drafting also include where the relevant accounting disclosure can be found in the financial statement no 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 you have to quantify the issue you have to express the issue you are you should not refer to any part of the financial statement so julia is confident manoj is confident well done majbeen i hope you are clear with respect to marking scheme typically one mis critical mistake will give you one mark but maybe some mistake is too complicated that could could give you more than one mark no you should not say by name you should not say by the position you should say management is not willing okay uh, akil has we don't need to provide recommendation once we find where no you should i you should come up with what should they have done in order to avoid this mistake you are not going to make separate paragraph for recommendation but you must say they should not use wording such as uh guess work they should not name the director something like that they have inappropriately used the name of the director they should not be doing it okay we are still left with this question okay customer liquidation concentrate guys 
included in the receivable shown on the cons consolidated statement of financial position is an amount of 287253 from a customer which has ceased trading okay that customer has ceased trading it means we need to write it off on the basis that the group has no security for this debt we as an auditor believe that the group should make a full provision for impairment of 287253 thereby reducing profit before taxation for the year and total assets as at 31st march 20x8 by that amount what's that so the auditor believes that the client needs to write it off and the auditor is highlighting all that in cam is there anyone who could help me is there anyone who could help me what's going on is there anyone who could help me just read the question all over again this is the continuity from cam so in the cam part 2 you are having a discussion regarding a particular receivable which has gone actually bad and as an auditor you believe that the client should de recognize it from the receivable and they should charge it in the profit and loss account as an expense but why are you having this discussion in the cams anyone who could help me Mohammad Ayaz, this should not be in the emphasis. No, 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 not about emphasis or whatever. This should not be part of the cam. Cam should not highlight something which is not in line with the relevant accounting standard. Cam should not highlight something which is a mistake. Cam should highlight something which is significant for the user's understanding and it is correctly dealt by the client. so the the usage of cam paragraph is not correct where it should have been used anyone what's the materiality somebody help me out with the materiality 287253 check out the materiality it's an asset check out with the asset and also check it out with the profit somebody help me i am assuming it is material for both assets and for the profit so this should lead to or this would lead to what if it is a material misstatement this would lead to what help me out philips well done it should lead to a qualified except for opinion paragraph because of what because of lack of evidence or because of material misstatement in the financial statement help me out yes manoj material misstatement very well done julia yes it's a disagreement well done now you have to structure your answer now let's go back to the answer no problems let's see the amount owed by the customer whatever it is is material as it represents 13% of assets sorry 13% of the profit and 2% of assets so it's material the except for qualification on the grounds of material misstatement is therefore appropriate so the somebody was asking me earlier whether we need to recommend the correct action there it is so the except for qualified opinion should have been used so the use of cam section is not appropriate right now you are going to get two marks out of it the cam the utilization of cam is not appropriate the details of the material misstatement should not be included in the cam section but should be given a basis for qualified opinion paragraph so a you should qualify your opinion all those details relevant to the materiality relevant to the size relevant to the qualification quantification and the you know size that should be in the basis for qualified opinion paragraph third the cam paragraph is not appropriate is this clear okay another mistake in the draft audit report that auditor says that once we are going to charge this 287253 this will reduce profit before taxation for the year and the total assets what's the mistake over here is there anyone who could help me what's the misstatement it will reduce the asset yes that's correct but there is another mistake yes the mistake is it will not reduce the profit it will increase the loss marjabeen very well done it will increase the loss rather than decreasing the profit why is that 
that's why I highlighted it that there is a loss. So considering the company is already in losses as an audit firm, you can't say that once this receivable will be written off, this will decrease the profit. You have to say it will increase the losses. This will give you one mark. Furthermore, the wording of the report currently references reducing the profit before tax when it should be referred to increasing the loss before tax. Okay, now we are done with camps. What, what's next? Qualified opinion arising from disagreement about the accounting treatment. Oh, oh, the positioning of this paragraph is incorrect. We all know after title and address C comes opinion paragraph and the so this opinion paragraph should have been before the camps. So the positioning of this paragraph is not correct. Qualified opinion arising with disagreement about the accounting treatment. Even the title is not correct. In our opinion, except for the effect on the financial statements of the matter described above, the financial statements have been prepared in all material respects in accordance with IFRS. So the title is not correct. The position is not correct. Just now let's read this one. Opinion paragraph. This is incorrectly positioned and incorrectly titled. It should be at where the start of the auditor's report and should be simply titled simple qualified opinion. Don't make it a lengthy heading simple qualified opinion. That's it. The opinion paragraph should be clearly cross reference to the basis. The, the answer is saying once you are coming up with the qualified opinion paragraph, your next paragraph before the camp should be what basis for qualified opinion paragraph. So there are many mistakes. A the title is not correct. The title is too lengthy. B the position is not correct before camp. There should be qualified opinion paragraph and even there is one one thing which is missing after qualified opinion and before camp there has to be what basis for qualified opinion paragraph. So two three mistakes are also available here. You can extract marks from here as well. Let's quickly explore the last paragraph which is many of you's favorite emphasis of matter paragraph. We as an auditor would like to draw attention to the loss before tax of 2.2 million for the year ended 31st March 20x8 and the group is in breach of the loan covenants with its key finance provided. If the client is in breach of loan covenant that creates an uncertainty related to going concern. Audit firm is trying to highlight that uncertainty related to going concern using a paragraph called. Emphasis of matter paragraph. What's the mistake over here? They should not use emphasis of matter paragraph rather according to ISA 570 going concern. They should use a paragraph called MURGC paragraph. Another mistake. After the opinion and the basis for opinion paragraph or for that matter after the qualified and the basis for qualified opinion paragraph and before camps this MURGC paragraph should be there. So there are two mistakes here a MURGC paragraph should have been used B MUC MURGC paragraph should have been before the camps. Is this clear? So this is not a mission impossible. There are many easy marks available. It's just that you need to redraft your own answer. You can skip certain sentences and you can extract your own answers. Incorrectly position. Uh, sorry. Cam ISA 570 says you should not use emphasis on meta paragraph. Rather, you should you should use what MURGC paragraph. Where should be MU MURGC? MURC MURGC should be right after basis for opinion paragraph. Is this clear? Is this clear? Are you will you be able to reproduce your answer for 12 marks? Can I have some kind of yes on that? Will you be able to reproduce your answer for 12 marks on your own with the help of solution a attainable answer? Yes, the uh, the usage of cam is correct. When it comes to a highly judgmental area, but they should make sure that they fully quantify the issue. Okay, thank you. Well done, well done. Now it's time to explore another past paper question. And that another past paper question is from more recent past paper. And the name of that question is called Kill Mister. And it's available in your exam kits. It is from 
March, June, June 2019. Okay, let's see what the exam requirements are. The first requirement for 10 marks. Let's read the requirement. Critically appraise the extract from the draft auditor's report. Again, you have to critically appraise the report. Will be will be a bit quicker now. Let's read the first paragraph. You are the manager responsible for the audit of a client called Kill Mr. Kamti. It's a listed company specializing in the manufacture and installation of soundproof partitions for domestic and industrial buildings. You are currently reviewing the draft auditor's report on the company's financial position, financial statements for the year ending 31st March 20x9. Extract from the draft auditor's reports are shown below. Okay. Let's see what the first paragraph has to offer. Independent auditors report to the shareholders and the directors of kill mister what the first paragraph is the There is one mistake which everybody can see what's the what's the mistake identify a mistake I'm giving you a hint this is the hint What's the mistake Yes, the first mistake is the first mistake is which I have recognized is the positioning of the opinion and basis for opinion paragraph. That's the first mistake. Another mistake. I'm giving you another hint. Try to figure out the mistake. I'm giving you another hint. Almas, very good. Umar, very good. Hassan Sultan, very good. Nashir, very good. Akil, very good. Julia, very good. Very good. Many of you, very good. The addressee has to be, oh, sorry, the title has to be independent auditor's report to the members, not to the directors. So the title is not correct. The positioning of two paragraphs is not correct. Okay. Now we have to read. Unfortunately, only two marks have been extracted as of now. We conducted our audit of Kill Mr. Company in accordance with international standards on auditing. Our responsibilities under those, well, when, when once you are referring international standards on auditing, you also need to refer international ethics standard boards and all that. That could be another mistake. It's a difficult mark to score, but it is one. Our responsibilities under those standards are further described in the auditor's responsibilities for the audit of the financial statement under section of our report. This is not something which you need to discuss over here. The responsibilities of the auditor would need to be discussed in the responsibilities of the management section. We are an independent of the company in accordance with the ethical requirements which are relevant to our audit. What what ethical requirements? So you need to refer them uh, of, the, of the financial statement in jurisdiction in which the company operates and we have fulfilled our other ethical responsibilities. What other ethical responsibilities in accordance with these requirements? We believe that the audit, audit evidence we have obtained is sufficient and appropriate to provide a basis for opinion. So, what's your basis for opinion? Well, we need to read the opinion. We have audited the financial statement of Kill Mr. Company, which comp comprises the statement of financial position as at 31st March 20X9 and the statement of comprehensive income statement of changes in equity and the statement of cash flow for the year ended and the notes to the financial statement including a summary of the significant accounting policies in our opinion the accompanying financial statements present fairly in all material respects the financial position of the company as at 31st march 2009 all of its financial performance and its cash flows for the year then ended in accordance with ifrs standards so is there any mistake is there any mistake which you have identified so far Okay, I have to be a little quick because I have to cover the part B of this question, which is a tricky question, which is a different question. It's not a mere approach question. So I, I have to be a little quick. So I am I'm running out of time. So let's just read the question quickly. Material uncertainty related to going concern. The company is financed by a long-term loan from its bankers, which is due for redemption in August. At the date, 
of this auditor's report, the company is in process of renegotiating the loan, but has not yet reached a final agreement with its banker. In our view, the loan finance is, is essential. Uh, therefore, in the absence of the finance fin finalized agreement represents a material uncertainty related to going concern. The financial statements have been prepared on a going concern basis, but do not make any reference to the loan redemption or the ongoing negotiation with the bank. So that there is an uncertainty related to going concern. The client has not disclosed it. So in that case, you should not be using the material uncertainty related to going concern paragraph because the client has not made any adjustment or disclosure relevant to that uncertainty. You should qualify that opinion. You should qualify your opinion. So the usage of material uncertainty related to going concern paragraph is not correct. If you believe it is material, you should qualify it. If, if you believe it is material and pervasive, you should come up with adverse opinion paragraph. Are you getting the point? The client has not made any adjustment or disclosure. So then you, you cannot highlight using it material uncertainty related to going concern. Okay, the last paragraph other information the company's principal activity is the manufacture and installation of soundproof partitions for domestic the com the company therefore engages in long term contracts which are incomplete at the reporting date and which are material to its revenue figure. The installation process is complex and significant judgment is applied in assessing the percentage of com of completeness which is applied to calculating the revenue for the year. The significance of this judgment requires us to disclose the issue and other information which is relevant to the users of the financial statement. You cannot use this for the other in you cannot use other information paragraph for that. This is not other information. This is part of the financial statement. So you have to use emphasis on meta paragraph or you have to use cams. If you have to express your response, you have to use cams. So there are many mistakes. I'm leaving this particular part for you to attempt at home quickly. Let's skim the marking scheme. What are the mistakes? The first mistake is for the one mark. Mind you, we need 10 marks, right? The first mistake addressee should not be shareholders only. Sorry, addressee should be only shareholders, not the directors. One mark. Incorrect order of the opinion and the basis of for opinion paragraph. Number third, there is no reference to the ethical code, which should be there. So three marks. What about material uncertainty? The material uncertainty regarding the going concern Op opinion paragraph should be added as qualified opinion paragraph and the basis for opinion paragraph should be basis for qualified opinion paragraph there is a material misstatement regarding the going concern so you cannot use um, murgc paragraph incorrect use of murgc paragraph you cannot use that is this clear long term contracts Incorrect use of other information paragraph. So you have to use your incorrect use of other information paragraph and rather you should use CAM paragraph. Your CAM paragraph should start with the introduction. What is CAM? What? Why are you using CAMs? And you need to explain what was the auditor's response. So are you clear? Will you be able to attempt and prepare this question by yourself? So let me come up with a recap. Number one mistake, the title was not correct. Number second marks, the opinion and the basis for opinion paragraphs position was not correct. Number third, the usage of MURGC paragraph was incorrect. Number four, the usage of other information paragraph was incorrect. Because of a material misstatement, the opinion paragraph should have been qualified opinion and the basis for opinion paragraph should be basis for qualified opinion. The, the other information paragraph is not correct as well. Rather, CAM should have been used. Is this clear? Daniel is asking when will we use other information paragraph? We will use other information paragraph in any case uh, in order to highlight that we are not auditing other information and we'll add on in the other information paragraph if, they, if there is a material inconsistency. So there was nothing about the material inconsistency. Inconsist that information should have been disclosed in the camps. That thing that all that in Daniel, all that information which was available in the question in the other matter, uh, other information paragraph was subject was relevant to the financial statements. Other information paragraph highlights information relevant, not relevant to the financial statement. That's why I am saying that the other information, the usage of other information paragraph is wrong. Okay, Daniel is clear.
Yes, Hassan, you can use emphasis of meta paragraph if the company is not listed, but in the emphasis of meta paragraph, you are not supposed to express what was your response and all that. That will be relevant to annual report example directly. Yes, Daniel, absolutely right. If you want in the other information paragraph, you should be discussing something which is not associated with the financial statements, something from the other information, such as you mentioned the chairman's report or anything like that. So I hope just like yesterday, we have solved more than one question on criticism on audit report. Now it's up to you if you are going to type and learn and drive an attainable answer out of it. And if you are going to learn it, you will be able to get pass marks in the third question, in the mock question, and eventually in the final exam. Let's explore the very last part before we finish off today's class. And that is the part B. And the marks are 15. Let's read the requirement first. From the information provided above, recommend the matters which should be included in the audit firm's report to those charged with governance. Now, as an auditor and as a student, you got to understand once you are done with the audit, at the completion and review stage of the audit, as an auditor, ISA 260 has, you know, created an extra responsibility on you that you need to report something to those charged with governance. What are you going to report? You are going to report certain things to those charged with governance, which you believe were very significant during the audit. Very important. Those things which are creating compromises on the internal control systems of the company, which items or things which could lead to frauds and errors in the future. It's anything which which could lead to business risk in the future. So from the information provided above, we'll read the question, recommend the matters, which items you are going to disclose to those charged with governance and explain why you are incorporating them. Yani, I mean, you have to highlight the importance of those items. So what would be the answer approach? We'll identify the issue from the question, we'll discuss its materiality, we'll discuss the relevant accounting rule, we'll discuss why we think that the why we think that this is important. Why think that why we think that the client's accounting treatment is wrong. Why we think that this this could lead to fraud. Why we think that this could lead to compromises on the company's future objectives and goals. That's how we are going to develop this answer. Keeping this thing in mind, identifying this issue from the question. And then having a discussion on the materiality and the accounting rule and then expressing your risk and expressing the importance. That's how we are going to develop the answer. Let's read the question quickly. The first paragraph is not going to give you anything apart from the fact that the will you will be able to calculate the materiality. Your firm Eddie has asked. Your firm Eddie and company has asked you to perform an independent review of the working papers of a company called Taylor company, which is a listed company and has been an audit client of your firm for the last 10 years. The audit field work is almost complete and as part of your review, you have been asked to advise the audit team on drafting their report to those charged with governance, which items we should incorporate. Taylor Company is a discount food retailer which operates 85 stores nationally. The financial statement for the year ending 30th April. So this is the year end. This is the revenue. This is the profit and here are the assets for the sake of calculation of materiality. Let's start the question main event after a period of rapid expansion 20x9 has been a year in which Taylor company has strengthened its existing position within the market and has not acquired any additional store or business. Okay, they are they are they are consolidating the company's job financial statements. The company's job statement of financial position for 20x9 includes a property portfolio of 315 million. Okay, 315 million. All of which are legally owned by the entity. Okay, fine. In the current year, the company has chosen to adopt a policy of revaluing I 16 property plan equipment for the first time. And this is reflected in the draft figures. Okay, fine. The audit work on property plan equipment includes testing a sample of the revaluation. Eddie Company requested at the planning stage that an independent external valuation report should be made available to the audit team at the start of the final audit visit. A number of these documents were not available when requested. And it took three weeks for them to be received. 
now this is a serious flaw which we encountered during the audit we were trying to gather the evidence we requested certain documents but there was a significant delay which cast doubt over the integrity of the management so i would like to highlight this important issue to those charged with governance so that they should be aware of a potential fraud they should be aware of the potential doubts over the integrity of the management so this is one point where from where you could get marks the audit working papers also identify that on review of the non current asset register there were four properties with a total carrying value of 11.1 million which had not yet been revalued and they were still recorded at a depreciated historical cost you will when you are when you will start the discussion you will calculate the materiality of this 315 from the asset and you will realize its material then you will have a discussion that according to i16 the whole class of asset should be revalued we cannot come up with cherry picking i16 does not allow that so considering the fact this 11.1 million has not been revalued that creates two things in my mind a the management is not you know competent enough they don't know the rules and regulations according to i16 so i would like to highlight this to the management secondly maybe there is a possibility they are trying to avoid avoid those four properties because they are loss making properties or they are not uh, you know there is no possibility of upward revaluation so i need to discuss all that with the management so i will come up with a heading revaluation of property plant or revaluation of property and that is how i will structure my answer let's see what the solution has to offer so this is how the solution is revaluation of property portfolio first of all according to isa 260 significant findings from the audit which are significant both with respect to you know qualitative issues quantitative issues accounting policies they need to be disclosed with those charged with governance now let's discuss the first issue that was a background i16 property plan equipment states that the revaluation policy should be consistent across the whole class of assets so considering the fact they have skipped this is not in line with i16 and those property plan equipment represents 2.1% of the total assets and they are still depreciated at the historical cost which is not in line with i16 and we need to disclose all that to those charged with governance why because this is a serious deviation from the standard which could lead to modified opinion moreover those delays made by the management that's an indication that maybe the management the integrity of the management is not intact is this clear okay let's continue with the question the audit supervisor review of taylor company's board minute identified that company has reno renovated car parking facilities of 17 of its store stores which has resulted in a significant increase in customer numbers and revenue at each of these locations so the company has renovated their car parking and as a result their revenue has gone up that's great so they should recognize all that renovation as an asset the total cost of the revenue renovation work which is 13.2 million you need to calculate the materiality has been included in the operating expenses that's not correct considering they are generating more revenue out of it i think that meets the criteria of asset the audit file includes a working paper recording discussion with the management which confirms that capital expenditure authorization forms had not been completed for this expenditure so without without capital expenditure authorizations they made certain expenditures that's a serious lack of internal controls and this poor lack of control or this lack of control system or that poor control system would suggest that the company is vulnerable open to frauds and in the future many more fraudulent expenditures could be carried out secondly their accounting treatment is not correct they should have recognized it as an asset so i need to disclose all that to those charged with governance because this is a serious flaw in their capital expenditures without approval how can they make certain certain purchases and they and I, again i have to doubt the integrity i have to doubt the competence of the management this should have been recognized as an asset last paragraph you are aware that your firm had intended to replace the current engagement partner mr br with philip who is the uh, firm's specialist in food retailer but unfortunately mr campbell got sick and as a result you would like to continue with the existing engagement partner for the 8th year now this is allowed provided the situation ex extraordinary 
I would like to disclose this to those charged with governance so that they are fully aware. We will perform the quality control review in order to will in order to make sure we have not made any ethical compromises. Let's quickly skim the solution. So what about the renovation of parking facility? First of all, you are driving the benefits out of it. So you should capitalize it. You should not charge it as an expense. You should need to calculate the materiality of that 30 million and it's clearly material. So they have made the incorrect application of IS-16 by charging it. They should have recognized it and you, they should have depreciated over the useful life. I need to inform all that findings to the low charge with governance because the management seems to be not competent enough with respect to I-16. Secondly, there is a serious weakness in the internal control system that could allow fraud and error in the future. The integrity of the management seems to be compromised. So I need to disclose all this to the management so that they could come up with, you know, proper actions. So I need to report this to those charged with governance so that they could come up with better control system, you know, strong and robust control system in order to avoid the business risk, in order to avoid the future frauds and errors, frauds and errors. So this is how you are going to have discussion on that. But reading minutes shows approval was then. Yes, even but the but the proper procedure was not followed. The capital expenditure form should have been, you know, signed and approved. So half control is there, but half control is not there. All that delays in information should also be discussed with those charged with governance. Are you clear with all that? Now, my dear students, you need to prepare these two questions. Once you are going to prepare these two questions, I will I will suggest two more in the WhatsApp group. Before tomorrow's class, I'm not asking you to prepare four questions before tomorrow's class. I'm just asking you to type and learn and prepare these two questions. But for this particular topic, I will recommend two more questions which you can prepare right after the webinar. As of now, if you are going to type and learn these two questions before the tomorrow's class, you could say you are pretty much there. You are there and you are reasonably well prepared for the topic called completion review and reporting. Now, the most underprepared topic of the AAA, the most underprepared topic of the AAA in the entire world is called audit related services. And this particular topic is going to be my agenda for day four. There are six audit related services. We are going to explore almost each one of them. So you are more than welcome to join us. Tomorrow in the final session, I will ex explain the audit related services tomorrow. I will also explain the post webinar plan which you should follow the critical success to sec sec uh, the critical success, the methodology, how you could you know plan your next few days. So I'll see you tomorrow with the audit related services or non audit assignments or audit related services. It is going to be the most important day. Why I'm saying that because audit related services are the most underprepared, under discussed topic uh, in the entire syllabus of AAA. Okay, uh, Akhil is saying if you have a chance, could you please explain the audit side of IS 19 tomorrow, please? I'll try my best, but I it's not possible to go into the details of accounting standard. Maybe somebody in the group will help you out. Otherwise, I'll try. I'll try. I, I will try tomorrow. IS 19 uh, employee benefit, right? Okay. Thank you very much, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Um, this day today, the, the day which we have invested today could lead to 25 marks in your final exam, provided you type and learn these two questions before tomorrow's class. That's it. No more homework. No more discussion. Daniel Phillips everyone out there.
type and learn these questions prepare these questions rock solid using acca practice platform create your own answers learn your answers before tomorrow's class i'll see you tomorrow with the most underrated topic and in the recent past examiner is testing audit assignments more often than not thank you very much i'll share everything in the whatsapp group don't worry thank you i'll see you tomorrow the last day i hope to see you all thank you bye bye thank you ars thank you philips kendi amar nashir thank you very much thank you manoj thank you thank you nashir thank you thank you everyone thank you very much see you tomorrow